You know, for me, entrepreneurial spirit is really driven by this goal of of creation, okay? Somebody has an idea and they want to create something, they want to build something, they want it to matter. And unfortunately, what ends up happening is way too many people just get sucked down the, the rat race and, you know, find themselves 10 years down the road doing something they don't care about anymore. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by executive strategist and senior leadership coach, Dennis Marvel. In our conversation, we dive deep into the journey of self-discovery and creation, emphasizing the importance of understanding your purpose and talents. Dennis shares insights on how to design a life with intention while staying open to possibilities that exceed your expectations. We'll explore the challenges and triumphs of building and sustaining a successful enterprise, and Dennis will share personal anecdotes of failures that propelled him to greater heights. Discover why having a clear vision and seeking fulfillment beyond mere success is crucial, and learn about the role of a coach in maintaining focus and perspective. Tune in to listen to the full episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Hero of the Hour podcast. Today, I'm joined by who I consider uh, a man who he, he may have a peer or two. I'm not sure who they are, but I don't know a better executive coach in the country than Dennis Marvel. Uh, Dennis and I have got a, you know, a decade plus long relationship of changing the lives primarily of dentists all over the country, but uh, you know, entrepreneurs and other folks. And I'm just excited because he always brings a fresh, a fresh perspective to everything that we do. And uh, I'm sure he's going to entertain and educate us uh, for the next uh, 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, so welcome to the podcast, Dennis Marvel. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, before I, I get to it, I want to make sure I don't, I, I get it right. You, I know you do a lot. You're a keynote speaker. You're a retreat leader. You're, I've already mentioned executive coach and avid traveler. But, uh, you know, I think before people know what you know, uh, I think they'd like to know who you are. And, you know, I, I know you came, overcame a lot of personal adversity in your life. And I think that uh, the people that are truly great always start with a little misfortune and overcome it. And that's uh, one of the things that helps them become great. So, you know, if it's not too personal or too, uh, you know, you know, you know, too emotional, I'd love people to kind of, you know, find out a little bit about your background and, uh, you know, how you got to how you got to here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to share. Um, you know, and, and the story, I'll take it all the way back when uh, I, I, I short on detail to keep it short. But when I was in high school uh, and actually a sophomore, my father looked at me and said, I joined the Navy to go to school. What are you going to do? So at that point, I figured out really fast that I need to make enough money if I wanted to go to school. So I founded uh, two different businesses at that point in time. Uh, the first one failed miserably. The second one was wildly successful and still exists to this day. Um, and, uh, you know, that kind of just started me on a, a journey of entrepreneurialism and a whole bunch of different careers. So I, when I sold the second business, I was recruited into the Wall Street world. Um, actually went through the training program that was portrayed in Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith. And uh, the gentleman in that that's actually portrayed in that movie uh, is also named Dennis. He was two years before me in the program, and it's a 90-day unpaid internship. And they start each day at 6 a.m. bringing somebody into a glass conference room and firing them. Um, oh, I wow. Have, I, yeah, it's, it was pretty intense. Um, and so I happened to be the last guy standing, which is what the requirement was. So I got the job, um, kind of worked my way up through the ranks to, at Dean Witter to vice president level when we, we sold Dean Witter to Morgan Stanley. And then I was recruited by American Express to help them build the brokerage side of, uh, Amer what's now Ameriprise. Um, their aim was to build the largest financial planning firm in the world, and their start was they bought an insurance company with 400 employees. So we went from that to 40, 
3,000, I think, um, around the world in a mere eight years. Uh, so it was a, a pretty incredible growth streak and a heck of a lot of fun. Um, in the midst of that, you talk a little bit about misfortune. I didn't start with it. It was like interrupted my life in the middle of it. I actually uh, was hit by a drunk driver um, who they estimated was doing about 110 miles an hour. It actually pushed my car backwards uh, from the point of impact about 30 feet. And uh, I spent the next two years mostly in the hospital, uh, broke my neck, broke my back, bunch of ribs, had, uh, I actually got, was impaled, uh, all kinds of internal injuries. And it was, uh, it was quite an experience, I can tell you. Um, so in the next two years, I was totally disabled. I spent about 18 months of that in the hospital and, uh, you know, 23 operations now that's not counting plastic and uh surgical things like skin grafts and stuff like that those are all the major surgeries um and you know i was really angry at the world i mean i was just i felt like i'd been robbed of life i lost everything that really mattered to me and um was pretty bitter about it and then one day and i, I remember this like it was yesterday uh, and uh, this was actually 16 years ago on the 7th, by the way. Uh, so we just passed that anniversary. And uh, But I remember to the day that I said, uh, I just can't live like this anymore, or I'm not going to live like this anymore. And that obviously left me with two choices. And uh, I didn't like choice number one. So I took choice number two and just decided to change everything about my life, you know, whether I could walk again or not. And it was really, it's been pretty miraculous since that point in time, because I've had an extraordinary life, you know, from the beginning. I mean, I've been pretty blessed in that realm, but it's because I actually believe that everything in life is a journey of self-creation. I mean, it's, it, it's not who we are, it's who we want to become. And if we get really clear about what that is, um, then set some goals and start working in that direction, uh, it's pretty amazing what all you can create. So we actually sat down and did an exercise that uh, we now call the white canvas that I do with a lot of clients. And it's just assuming that if life was a blank canvas and you could paint anything you wanted, what would it be? Um, and when, you know, when I did it, it was full of values and the people I wanted to surround myself with and the impact I wanted to have on the world. It wasn't where I wanted to live or what kind of house I wanted to live or what kind of car I wanted to drive or job I had or anything like that. And, um, you know, that was really a, a, a trajectory launch in my life that has been truly amazing. And so going from somebody who was told they would never walk again to somebody who, mountain bikes every day all summer and then gets about 50 or 60 days in on a snowboard up on the mountain a uh, little fly fishing in between a bunch of paddle boarding and things like that and uh, you know it's it's been absolutely extraordinary and the business success goes along with that because if you're really diligent about who it is that you want to become um it just becomes an act of creation and you become a creator and you create things and you build things and businesses and all of that. And so um, I've been, um, you know, amazingly successful at, once again. Uh, and that was after I had to do a total rebuild because my time in the hospital was like after in, I, my insurance hit its maximum amount out of that it could pay uh, about 12 months in. And I still ended up owing about $800,000 when I got out. So had to, you know, kind of re rebuild financially and all of that. And, uh, you know, it's just, it really is. It's been an amazing ride and an amazing story. And I'm not done yet. You know, I, I've stolen one of your phrases, which I use regularly. I, I do give you credit often for it. Um, use, use the word life by design. And, and you just described to me something, a life where you, you'd never have to retire from it. Uh, you probably wouldn't even have to take a vacation from it if you did it right. So explain to people what a life by design is, because I think that's what every entrepreneur wants to achieve. And almost no one does unless they're working with people like you or, work, excuse me, working with you. <laughs> Let me be clear. I'm sure there's others like me. And, uh, if, if, you know, it's, it, it's one of those things. It's the relationship that counts. But um, yeah, so, uh, you know, this all came from uh, an idea of, 
uh, a quote from Robert Byrne that I read. And uh, this was shortly after I'd, I'd, I'd gotten out of the hospital and kind of got medical clearance. And I jumped in my Denali and started driving west with no destination in mind uh, and ended up in a, a cool little mountain ski town. Uh, not the one I live in now, but, uh, you know, spent about two years there. It was one of the most beautiful places I'd ever seen. And in this in this quote by Robert Byrne, he said that the, the purpose of life is a life of purpose. And so I started first with what is my purpose? What am I here for? What is my my unique talents and gifts? Um, and you know, what is it that I really have to offer to the world? And Richard Strozzi of the Strozzi Institute in California um, has you do an exercise when you're in his program that is you have to tell what is your offering to the world. And so in that is where I took that quote and very quickly discovered that life was not a journey of self-discovery, which I think is unfortunately the way most of us approach it. It was certainly the way I approach life, trying to figure out who you are and uh, you know what you're great at and just scrambling from day to day. But life is actually a journey of, of self-creation. And so if you're really trying to get out there and, and you design your life and are very intentional about it, um, but you also have to be free enough with it to know that whatever you thought is going to be outdone. Um, it's always been more amazing than I ever expected it would be, um, because I'm open to all the possibilities and I'm not too restrictive on what that design is. It's just like, okay, this is something I want to have. This is something I want to experience. And, um, I figured out a way to do it, you know, and, and it's amazing because with that whole mindset, it really does change everything about life and everything about about business. It becomes attraction as opposed to building things, you know, and we all think we have to work really, really hard to be super successful. And that's not really true. I would say, you know, one other thing that you mentioned, you mentioned that you failed, you had a failed business early on in your career, right? I will tell you this, that I can think of the three or four times I failed going back to high school. And that was what always fueled my success. It was the it was the rocket fuel to the success I had. Tell us about how failure propelled you. <laughs> um, well, you know, I mean, it, it was I, I kind of just took it in stride at the time. But looking back on it today, I learned more about people and business from that experience than I have in all my education and all my training and degrees and licenses and all those things um, ever since then. Um, so it was a very amazing experience that gave me um, more knowledge than I could have asked for. I mean, you know, it, it was really, really amazing. And, you know, all of these things, it's really interesting. Um, you know, Steve Jobs did a speech at the, uh, um, Stanford University at their commencement one time, and he talked about connecting the dots, that you can't do it looking forward, but you can do it looking backwards. And there's a common thread that runs through every experience in my life that all leads to where I am today and what I'm going to do today and what I'm going to do tomorrow and what I'm going to do next week. Um, and that was a critical part of it. You are, people affectionately call you, at least in part of your life, they call you the doctor coach. Um, <laughs> yes. is, are you a doctor? I know you're not. So, so why do they call you the doctor coach? Uh, you, well, I coach doctors, uh, specifically, um, in just about every arena. And, uh, you know, my experience with healthcare was that the system was broken and it needed to be fixed. And so, uh, somewhere along the lines, I, you know, got involved with a firm that specializes in, uh, you know, dental and veterinary and things like that. And now that's expanding out to traditional medicine, group surgical practices and things like that of people that want to get out from underneath the, the hospital employment and, you know, having to treat based on what the insurance companies will do and helping these people get out and create businesses on their own, which they didn't think was possible again. So we're almost reverse engineering the consolidation phase that took place in medicine, 20, you know, over 20 years. and helping people go out and build businesses. And then, you know, it, it's it's about they they build one and it's really about creating their own enterprise 
and becoming the CEO to be able to control what they do. And, you know, it was really my understanding of doctors and, and one in particular, uh, who was a guy who did the final surgery on my neck that finally changed everything for me. And, um, you know, he was an absolutely amazing individual. And we spent a ton of time together to understand where doctors are and how they think and how they work. And that's really what inspired my passion is because if they know they can actually get out and do things about the situation that they're in today, um, they actually do it. And it's amazingly successful and they love it. And so I interact with them on a level that is very frequent and constant, um, you know, to really help them pursue and create what they want to create following the same model I did. You know, I I, I think that you, there may be some people as good as you. I haven't found any or too many, certainly. But I don't know if you have any peers. But I, I would say um, when you're at the top of your game like you are, the best still get better. How do you continue to evolve and get better and create more value for people when when m many people from the outside looking in think you're you know you're what you're doing is as good as it gets? Um, twofold. I mean, number one, you know, go back to the philosophy I mentioned earlier is that life is is who we're becoming. It's not who we are today, and so. Every step of the journey, um, you know, and I believe that you should never leave the scene of a met goal without establishing a new one. Um, I have always pursued excellence in, in every area I can. Uh, I can tell you that I haven't quite mastered that on a snowboard, but I'm getting a heck of a lot closer. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's just it's a constant pursuit. And the crazy thing is it's not harder than what most other people do to try to struggle to get through the day. And I've been a lifelong student and my real passion in life is, you know, potentiality, uh, you know, which is my phrase for what is human potential and knowing that we all underestimate ourselves and people can do things they never thought they could do. And so th that's really where I come in is to, you know, helping people through the tough times, helping them overcome what they need to overcome. Um, I'm the guy that they call when they uh, are, are super stressed and something's going on. And, um, you know, for me, it's just been this, it's a constant pursuit. There's no other way I can say it is it really is a, a driving passion in my life to continue evolving and to continue learning. So I'm, you know, a voracious reader. Um, I, you know, I don't listen to a whole lot of, of um, things over the internet. I got a few podcasts that I follow pretty religiously, but most of my information comes from books and current events journals. So I devour all the uh, the medical journals and all those things out there just because I find it fascinating. So I stay ahead of the curve. You know, my my I kind of laugh because over the weekend I saw a bunch of phony stories that this fake AI and other fake internet stuff. So I, you know, I would say, you you know what Abe Lincoln always used to say you Abe Lincoln would always say you know you can't trust the internet that was uh, one of his famous <laughs> quotes uh, uh so uh, I think it's, it's there but you have a there's an expression that you're connected to that um I think everybody who's watching this or listening to this would like to know what it means tell people what the fulfillment famine is um you know, I, I believe that in the United States in particular, but, you know, it also exists in other places in the world, but it's it's reached pandemic levels here, is there is actually a famine of fulfillment. We don't know how to pursue a life that um, is truly fulfilling. I mean, we're never taught that. And our whole system, including our economic system, is designed to, you know, kind of keep you pushing without knowing what it is that you're really pushing for. So getting really clear about, you know, what it is you want, what is the outcome you want, what is the experience you want, and, and what is literally going to make me have an extraordinarily fulfilling life. And it, that involves a lot more than just business success, although I think that's a very major part of it. Um, you know, it, I mean, it really does it's what feeds your soul. And most people don't ever stop and take the time to figure out what that is. And they get little bits of it. They have little hobbies and things like that. But 
I found that you can make it everything that you pursue and everything that you do and the reason why you do what you do. I mean, you mentioned earlier that I've created a life and, and a career that I will, you know, I can't imagine ever retiring from. Uh, Mary would shoot me if I did because I'd probably drive her crazy. But, um, you know, it's it's just, it's one of those things that you can really seek fulfillment and get success along the way. But fulfillment should be the goal. It's not just success because that's not very fulfilling in and of itself. You know, I, I, I find that with... Uh... You know, and I, I hate to get into political discussions because they often end in just anger or uh, or, or communication. But I think that, you know, the these funny, days, funny, which is kind of crazy. I mean, it's funny, like we're all better together. I don't know why we're arguing about everything. Well, you know, the funny the funny thing I think is that that there's I find the people we work with have great anxiety and they have great anxiety or certainly more than they've ever had because they're on social media all the time. They're on they're on their phones. But more importantly, they're being scared all the time. They've been scared about the pandemic. They were going to die from the coronavirus. Or if you're a Democrat, if Trump gets reelected, uh, you're going to there's going to be an existential existential threat to democracy. But of course, if you're a Republican, if Biden gets elected, there will be an existential threat to democracy. So and 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 so no no matter what occurs, there's an there's an existential threat that's going to keep people scared. And keep people from fulfilling and having their best life. That they're being controlled um, because people are controlling their emotions and not allowing people to be in creation and fascination mode and live the purposeful lives that they want. Do you see any truth in that? Um, and there's absolutely truth in that, which is why I don't watch standard media. Um, and you know, politicians are all trying to sell us something. And people will do more to get away from something they're afraid of than they will to move towards something that they really desire. And they know that about us. And so they're selling fear. That's their product. That's how they get elected. The news is the same way. They, you know, and, and it's, it's every news channel. There's not one that I think, you know, is any better than the others. Um they're they're marketing. I mean, they're selling viewer time, which is they have to addict you to what you're watching. And they know the easiest way to that is fear. And so I do not watch or listen to any news from any source. I get all of my news and my information from, um, you know, reading. And if I want to know something, I go direct to the source. So, you know, it's like during the pandemic, there was all this crazy stuff going on and people who had all kinds of rumors flying all over the place and all of those things. But all you had to do is really go to the sources of the information, go to the, you know, our, our institutions and our healthcare system that has, you know, reliable history and follow what they're doing. You know, if you want to, to navigate through anything, you can find somebody who has done what you're doing and is in the spot you're in. And if they succeeded at it, you can mirror what they do and come out a totally different picture. So, you know, I really I don't have I don't get involved in, in you know, all the noise out there. Uh, and that was intentional. And it wasn't always the way I spent my life. And 9-11, I had four TVs in my office and, you know, I was watching the same thing on all four. And, um, I, you know, I just cut it out. I quit doing it. And I think. I may have watched TV once in the last two months. You know, I'll go watch a movie, but that's about it. Well, that's why you're so smart. You know, uh, as a coach of entrepreneurs, tell people tell people what what being an entrepreneur means, and and how do you nurture an entrepreneurial spirit? What what's an entrepreneurial spirit, and then how do you nurture it? Um, you know, for me, entrepreneurial spirit is really driven by this goal of, of creation. Okay. Um, somebody has an idea and they want to create something. They want to build something. They want it to matter. Um, and unfortunately what ends up happening is way too many people just get sucked down the, the rat race and, you know, find themselves 10 years down the road doing something they don't care about anymore. I mean, I actually got promoted in the Wall Street world to the level where I hated my job because it was all, you know, dealing with regulators and attorneys all day. Um, it wasn't dealing with people and helping them get where where they get. Um, and it, it, a cool side note here, Mark, I got this really great text uh, two days ago from a gentleman in North Carolina 
who, when he was 22, I got him started on an investment program uh, as, as his financial advisor, and he wasn't making a whole lot of money, and he just was diligent. And I got this text from him, and he sent me a picture of a statement um, from years back, and he was able to fully retire before age 50 because he did all those things. And, you know, having something like that that comes back and nurtures you is pretty fulfilling. So that's my side note. But entrepreneurial spirit is really about, I want to create something, you know, and I, I do believe that we were created with the ability to create. We are the only, you know, being out there that can come up with an idea and create something radically new. And that is an energy and a life force that unfortunately, we, very few people can tap into because it's taught out of them in our society. And, you know, that's really what life is all about is, is what is it you want to do and what impact do you want to have and what legacy do you want to have? And by the way, legacy, live your legacy today. That's not about what happens when you leave. Your legacy is what you are going to do today. And when you start to look at the world that way, that's pretty different. How do you nurture it and keep it going? That's a constant um, issue of focus. And, it is having somebody you really trust that is gonna, you know, help you see through the fog and look in from the outside and, you know, hear what the problem is, help you solve the problem, but also help you put it in proper perspective. Because we do get really consumed with some things that are not as important as we think they are. Um, and they certainly don't have the impact that we think they do. And, you know, I'm, I'm a coach. I coach doctors. Uh, I have a coach because they help me stay focused on what's most important to me. And I face the same challenges everybody else does. I just ignore them. <laughs> you know? It's like, if I'm having a challenge with one, I'll figure out a way to look around it and try to put it in a new perspective. And once I do that, yeah, it's not as big of an issue as I thought. I think everybody should have a coach. I've always had a coach and I I think the best, the best and the brightest always have a have a coach. Here's my kind of last kind of question I, I sort of have for you, and this is the kind of the, the, the questions: Who should be talking to you, and and why should they be talking to you? What could they what could they expect from a relationship? So if somebody's sitting there saying, "Hey, I don't have a coach," or "I've got a coach that's that's uh, you know not 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 meeting all of my expectations," why should they talk to you and and uh, you know, what, 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 what can they expect as a result of the relationship? So, um, you know, first off, it, it is, I do specialize in doctors. It's not the only people I coach. You know, I do a lot of work in, in the marketing arena, uh, you know, as well as still some finance stuff and some real estate people. But um, my focus has always been on doctors and that's just my passion. So the people that should be are those that actually want to build an enterprise, not a doctor who wants to go out and build a practice where they practice their craft, but somebody that wants to become entrepreneurial and actually grow and build an enterprise. And we're not talking small business here. I mean, these things are can be huge. And I've watched them grow from, you know, single doctors to $30 million in 10 years and less. Um, I've seen some, you know, cross the $100 million mark in as little as four years. Um, and so there's a lot of a lot of business opportunity out there for a doctor who really cares about the standard of care, wants to have more control over their care and their patient care. And because of that, they can attract more of the best and the brightest. And so if we give them all a place to go with a, a plan that is mutually beneficial to every one of them, it uh, it creates success over and over again. So it really is that doctor that wants to go out and do more than simply practice medicine. They want to go out and do multiple things. You know, um, most of our clients are still dentists and they are totally on an entrepreneurial track. The world is trying to consolidate that whole industry just like it did medicine. And these people are out to change that. And they can play the same game. There's no reason they should let somebody else make money off their equity. Um, they can go build their equity themselves. It's what they put their life into. Um, and they can be the ones that benefit So some financial firm out there. Dennis, how do people get a hold of you? 
I it's it, I can be reached by phone. It's probably the easiest way. I'll actually give you my cell phone number. Uh, it's 206-718-8567. Uh, more than likely, you're going to get my voicemail if you call me because I am always on the phone. And uh, But I will call you back the same day. I, I return every single message I get same day. I can also be reached uh, by email. And uh, my the easiest email to catch is dennis at dennismarvel.com. Well, I will tell you, Marvel is your last name, but uh, Marvel aptly describes uh, the work you do. It is certainly marvelous, and uh, you are you are a marvel. Uh, you are truly a marvel. So, Dennis, thank you for taking time from your uh, schedule to spend some a few moments with us, and uh, just appreciate you and appreciate uh, all the abundance you create in the world. Yeah, thank you, Mark. I greatly appreciate spending some time with you, and look forward to when we can meet in person yet again.